Renzo Piano, born in Italy, 1937, is a world-renowned architect and designer of buildings. From the Georges Pompidou in Paris and the Tisch Bauer Cultural Centre on the Tinu Peninsula, to the Shard and New York Times buildings in London and the US. Born into a family of builders, there's no surprise of his career in the construction industry. His grandfather, owner of a masonry empire, handed the business down to Renzo's father, who expanded the company to construct houses as well as sell construction materials. Piano went to the Milan Polytechnic University, graduating in 1964, then teaching at the very same place until 1968. At the same time, he was working in two large international firms for the famous architect Louis Kahn and the engineer Zygmunt Stanislaw Makowski. His first building was completed in 1968, the IPE factory in Genoa, characterised with a steel and reinforced polyester roof and created a continuous membrane for the covering of a pavilion at the Milan Triennale, also 1968. Two years later, he received his first international commission, another pavilion, this time in Osaka, Japan. He worked on this with his brother, who, unlike Renzo, studied engineering, as well as his family company, who supplied the materials for the structure. Renzo Piano wanted a lightweight, steel and reinforced polyester building that appeared industrial yet artistic. He certainly got what he wanted. After working with his father and other architects, he established a partnership with Richard Rogers throughout the 1970s, after Rogers admired Piano's work on the Osaka Pavilion. Their first project, the B&B Italia, had early design elements similar to that of his most famous work, which will be shown later in this video, as the conduits for heating and water were highlighted and painted in bright colours. In 1971, Piano competed with major architectural firms and won the commission for one of the most prestigious projects in Paris, the Centre Georges Pompidou, the French National Museum of 20th Century Art. This was a massive shock to the architectural world due to the little experience with museums and other major structures that Piano had. However, those with the power to choose who won the contract were particularly interested with his work with the highlighted conduits from the B&B Italia. When the building was completed and shown to the public, the view of architecture in the everyday household dramatically changed, as no other well-known buildings highlighted the essential services as was done in this museum. The escalator crossed the facade of the building at a diagonal in a transparent tube. This kind of design made Piano world famous almost overnight, the media naming the building style as high-tech. Piano later argued, however, that this style of design is instead a challenge to academism, as well as being a complete parody of the imagery of technology at that time. Piano further argues that considering it high-tech is actually a mistake. Renzo Piano's fascination with technology is evident in all his designs, although later in his career he takes more consideration of the building's context. For example, the Menel Collection Museum, built in 1987, has a low, flat scale, in order to be in keeping with the surrounding buildings. Piano described it as serene, calm and discreet. Visitors are greeted by a large front garden at the north side, which allows you to take in the area and its surrounding bungalows that populate the rest of the neighbourhood. The wood panelling on its exterior connects the building to its location, while the concrete louvers under the glass ceiling are typical of a piano building. Regarding the louvers, for each one a light is able to be added for extra illumination for the gallery but for the majority of galleries they are only lit up by sunlight passing through the louvres. In the 1980s, Piano and his architectural firm took on a variety of projects and used the most up-to-date advanced technology at the time. However, again contrasting with his early design of the Pompidou Centre, it was to be used as discreet as possible. Renzo Piano's portable IBM pavilion was designed to be a lightweight, portable tunnel used for public displays. The demountable pavilion travels from city to city in a fleet of specially built trailers. It showcases Piano's early explorations into lightness, transparency and construction with repetitive units. In 1982, a Fiat Lingotto factory closed down. Three years later, the Renzo Piano Building Workshop, his architectural firm, was commissioned to convert the building into a multi-purpose centre while maintaining its architectural identity. For this reason, Piano decided to alter little of the building's exterior. The interior, however, was massively modified to include an exhibition centre, conference centre, 
auditorium, hotels, offices and retail space. In 1967, Fiat Group's management headquarters returned to the office block. Five years later, the bubble, a completely transparent meeting room on the roof of the Lingotta building, was added. In 1998, a joint project between New Caledonia and the French government hired Piano to design the Jean-Marie Tijbal Cultural Centre in order to display the culture of the Canuck people, the indigenous people of New Caledonia. This is after the leader of the independence movement was assassinated in 1989, and you had a vision of establishing a cultural centre which blended the linguistic and artistic heritage of the Canuck people. The building consists of a mixture of traditional and modern materials, such as the local wood, along with glass and aluminium. The widow of the assassinated Canuck people commented on the structure. We, the Canucks, see it as a culmination of a long struggle for the recognition of our identity. The Boteen Centre, a gallery for art, culture and education, opened in 2017 in Santander with a total cost of 77 million euro. The structure is half based on land, with other half suspended over water on stilts. This avoids obstructing the view of the sea and the beautiful bay landscape. Stairways and elevators lead up to the two blocks, which are separated by small steel and glass walkways. The exterior of the building is covered in over 270,000 metallic discs, which reflect the colours of the surrounding sea and sky. About the art centre, Piano said, from the very beginning, I wanted the building to fly. The levitation trick was used to counteract the local residents' response that it would block the view of the sea. The Shard is a 306 metre tower, making it the tallest building in the UK, located in London that opened in 2013. It contains over 70 floors, including 25 used for office space, 17 for hotels, 13 for apartments, 3 for restaurants, and three as a public viewing gallery, the rest mainly being used for mixed use. Piana said that he was inspired by the railway lines next to the site, the nearby London church spires, as well as masts of sailing ships. Like many of Piano's designs, the shard was designed with energy efficiency in mind. It is fitted with a combined heat and power plant, operating on natural gas from the UK national grid. Fuel is efficiently converted to electricity, and heat is recovered from the engine to provide hot water for the building.